Okay, so to finish the unit today, we're going to take a look at some questions where it would be very beneficial to have a calculator handy. But if you don't have a calculator, remember Delta Math has a calculator, and I'll show you some things to help you get rid of some of your answer choices when it comes to multiple choice. So the first section, uh, you're going to see questions like this, which equation best matches the graph shown below? Um, now, in a question like this, this parabola is opening upside down, so you can get rid of any answer choices that have an A value that's positive. Right? It has to be negative if it's going to go upside down. Because a parabola with a positive A value, remember it goes A, B, C, that's going to be right side up. So these answer choices are out. Um, you can type it in the calculator, but where it crosses the y-axis is the y-intercept. Okay, so if we look at this next one, the one that was not correct, to charge my calculator, so we'll see how long it runs. So it's negative 3x squared minus 6x plus 7 graph. And my window, we can't quite see it all, so if we click zoom and then fit, which is 0, here it is. And then I can see here, okay, it doesn't look like mine, um, zoom standard, it might look better. Number six, as that's a 10 by 10 screen, yeah. We could see even from a table that it crosses at zero seven, okay? And that would be our y-intercept. So the correct answer here would be this one. And our next example, example two, it says to rewrite the quadratic function in standard form. So remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So the first thing, anytime you have the square of a binomial, I like to do that off to the side. So we'll do that over here. I'll draw a line. So x plus 4 squared means x plus 4 times x plus 4. And we're going to just use the distributive property, or FOIL, if any of your teachers said that. Okay, so x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. Combining the two middle terms gives us the perfect squared trinomial x squared plus 8x plus 16. So now where that is, I'm going to replace that square with the trinomial. Okay, now distributing that negative 3, so negative 3x squared minus 24x minus 48 plus 8. So our final answer, when we combine those terms without the variable, those are our only like terms, it's negative 3x squared minus 24x minus 56. And you can always check that you are correct either in Delta Math or using the tool by typing the original equation into the calculator. Just want to go slow and not rush it like me. And then type your answer in and you should have the same table of values or the graph should of the second should go right over the top of the first. So I look here and they're different. So did I type something in wrong? Oh, right here. Yep. Negative 48 plus 8 is a negative 40. So let's, again, rushing. There we go. It matches. Awesome. So that's where the calculator comes in really handy because you can go back and check your work. So this should be not minus 56 because they were opposite signs above, but minus 40. Good. All right. So, oops, looks like I forgot to delete this online. So the next question, just take the white out to it. Handy white out tape. All right, we're going to complete the square to write it in vertex form. Now, this is vertex form, okay? As you can spot the vertex right here. So we want to write it in this format, which back from yesterday, it was a step in completing the square. 
think they used a and b and it was x plus a squared plus b. So we're going to complete the square to do that. However, since it's not equal to zero, we're just going to add the box in right after the x. All right. And then keep the plus six. All right. Remember though, an equation, whenever you add to one side, you have to add to the other. So I am going to add the box on both sides. So half of four is two, and then two squared is four. Okay. So therefore we get a y plus four equals I'm going to rewrite this as the square x minus 2 squared plus 6. Because remember, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 plus 2 is 6. And then subtract the 4. So we get y equals x minus 2 squared plus 2. And we should be able to go to the graphing calculator and type those in to see if they match again. So the original x minus 4, whoops, x squared, plus 6, and then x minus 2 squared, plus 2. And the tables match. So we're all set. All right, so this was the answer here. So this is vertex form, standard form. So standard form is just ax squared plus bx plus c and then vertex form has the square of a binomial, okay? All right. Which equation best matches the graph shown below? So with the vertex, okay, so let's note the coordinates. So vertex is right here, and that's 1, negative 2. Okay, so let's again use that method of getting rid of a couple answer choices because these are upside down, right? Because we have that negative A, so it's going to put it this direction. So it's either going to be this one or this one. So notice this one matches, that one matches. Now, hmm, so is it going to be plus one squared or minus one? So let's go to the calculator. 3 times x plus 1 squared, minus 2, and then 3 times x minus 1 squared, minus 2. So it's either blue or red, red being the second one. So let's see. That's shifted to the left, and that one is shifted to the right. So it's the red one which is x minus 1 squared. So it ends up being opposite. So whatever the 1 is here, it's going to be the opposite negative 1 down below. Okay. Number 5. Find the coordinates of the vertex uh, algebraically. So what we're going to do is use the axis of symmetry formula. Okay, we could also put it in vertex form, but I think this is a good um, review. And I'm going to use AOS for the axis of symmetry formula, which is x equals negative b over 2a. Because, so in any parabola, the axis of symmetry always goes through the vertex. So that'll tell you what your x is. And then you just plug x in to find y. So let's do, we've got A is 5, B is 30, and C is 60. Notice we don't even need the C. So the X value is negative B, so negative 30 over 2A, or 2 times 5. So negative 30 over 10 is a negative 3. So our vertex is negative 3, and then just plug the 3 in for X. We could type this whole line into our calculator and to get the y value. All right, so let's go to the graphing. So 5 parentheses 3 squared plus 30 times 3 plus 60. 
and we get 195. We could also go to our calculator and check it to make sure we're right. So we type in the original equation. So 5x squared plus 30x plus 60. And then go to the table, and I'm looking at negative 3, when it should be 15. So, oh, the issue is that negative. All these ways to check, and I'm missing little things. So go back to y equals, or get out of the main screen, highlight this whole thing, bring it down, and I'm going to insert the negative. Negative 3 squared. 30 times negative 3, whoops, well, I might as well just type it in again, sorry about that, and we get 15, which is what I had or saw on the calculator, so our vertex is negative 3, 15, that's why it's great to have all these different ways to check the math, because if the teacher's making some little mistakes, you're bound to make some little mistakes too. All right, so determine whether the quadratic function shows uh, below has a minimum or maximum value, and then state that maximum value. So a couple things. Type it into the calculator. Give yourself that visual. But if there's a negative out in front, that should tell you something right away. And if it's opening right side up or upside down. So have it in your head which way before I hit graph. Good. If you said upside down, you were right. And then let's go to trace. And let's scroll along. Why isn't trace working? Graph trace. It's scrolling through L1 and L2. I'm not quite sure what's going on in my calculator, so I'm going to go to a table. And I'm going to look at the vertex. So where do we see that flip in numbers? Right here. So it goes 0 above and 0 below 2. So because our quadratic was opening this way, that is a max value. And the vertex is 6, 2. So it's a max value of 2. What's the highest value of the function, which is your y? Okay. Remember, f of x is the same thing as y equals. So the max value is an output. All right, last question. It's a word problem. A company sells widgets. The amount of profit y made by the company is related to the selling price of each widget. Using this equation, find out what price the widget should be sold for to the nearest cent for the company to make the maximum profit. So the selling price is x, and then the profit's y. So if we think of this as a graph, so here's our profit, and here's our number, or the selling price. So cost of widget. It's negative, so it's going to be opening upside down. And you can go to the calculator and type that in, OK? So let's just draw an upside down curve, and we want the maximum profit, so the highest y value, okay? So in order to know the highest y, we must need to know x. So we use that axis of symmetry, which I need the a value and the b value, because it's x equals negative b over 2a. So negative 1542 divided by um, 2 times negative 34. And you can type, remember, you can type that whole fraction in using the fraction key. Go to alpha y equals. And so negative 1542 over 2 times negative 34. And we get that decimal. Okay? So in getting that decimal, Okay, or in this case, the fraction. See how it says the nearest cent? I'm going to leave it as 771 over 34, and then just use that on my calculator for the x. Okay? If I change that to a decimal, 
you can see what type of number it would be. Okay, that is um, 6747052. We have our irrational number. So let's go to, um, or actually it looks like the decimal ends, and it also is a ratio, so it is rational. So let's go to um, the calculator and type in negative 34. And then go up and grab the fraction, or you can type it in. Squared plus 1542x. So go up and grab it again. And then minus 10037. And we get that, but it wants it to the nearest cent. So I am going to go math and change it to a decimal. And we get y equals 7446.558824. Okay, that's after we plug it in. So we should make note here that y equals, since I just did it on the calculator, Okay, it's the nearest cent, that's the decimal place right here. So we have for money, $7,446.56. And I believe that is it for today. Take care. Have a good day.